A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video all about how to master the map Burnout. I listed 10 items that I thought were key for anyone to master any map with the idea of applying them to Burnout. I went through numbers 1, 2, 4, and 5, and then I said I would cover the rest of the topics in a couple of videos. Well, I'm here to make a bit of a confession. I packed way too many topics into one singular map. The truth is some of these concepts overlap. Some of them aren't really going to be that useful to you until you understand the root of the concept and not tie it to any specific map. So here's a modified plan. I'm gonna run through what I like to call survival scanning and show you snipe lanes along the way. Essentially what I'm gonna be doing is going through all of these different routes throughout the burnout map and showing you exactly what's going through my mind and what I'm concerned about when I'm taking a route. I really think this is going to help you out in your situation because you might be able to notice things that you've never thought of before. And then the rest of these topics, if there's enough interest and these are something that you guys would like to see me do, I'd be happy to do a video specifically on something like team routes, for example, where I show you particularly good team tactics on a couple of maps or maybe decision making. If that's something you struggle with, I think that could easily be a video all on its own. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. Far too often when I'm helping someone in trials or comp, I see them getting sniped non-stop. The concept I'm going to is somewhat similar to something called slicing the pie in slower games such as CSGO. The only difference is that Destiny 2 moves very quickly, so you don't necessarily have time to use this technique in full while you're going through a map. And it's for that reason I want to teach you some of the hotspots and some of the really effective ways to angle off and mitigate your risk. Let's begin with the outside heading in towards East Tumblr. So if I'm coming up in the East Yard, I already have to be careful if I'm on the right hand side of it because I can already get sniped from up there by the entrance of bridge. So I actually typically try and come in on the left hand side and I have five things I'm concerned about when I'm about to slide out here. So if I slide here, that wheel is there for now, but I have to worry about getting sniped from that bridge area that I mentioned. I have to worry about getting sniped from all the way across here. I have to worry about getting shot from here, from right here. A lot of people like to slide from bottom bridge. And last but not least, up here in the bridge area. So that's five different spots where you can get shot from if you're coming in in this direction. And that's actually why I don't really like it because it's a five to one situation. They don't have a lot of options that they have to worry about. So if you are gonna do this, I recommend making sure you're on the left side of this rock. I recommend you hug this wall as much as you can. And when you do go across, you're either gonna challenge them with a sniper and then you're gonna take a one in four chance to hit the right snipe. Alternatively, you could just slide across like this. Now I know that you can still get headshot when you slide with your head backwards or do something like that, but I'm telling you, I do this all the time and it has significantly increased my survivability. All right, now if you're heading towards the middle, you kind of have three options, right? If you're sniping, you might think you wanna go through the back, you can go through the middle, or you can hang tight in the front. So let me show you some tricks on those. What I want to do on this case is not actually slide out. And the reason why is because I want to utilize this little roof to my advantage. Now that you've got people like Walla flying around all the damn time with their stompies as a hunter or people like Potato who are floating up in the air who could snipe you from very high up, you need to be conscious of that. And using this to your advantage will block that lane. Now I tend to prefer actually using this middle one and the reason why is because I still have, if I'm gonna peek out this side, I still have this to kind of cover me from anything that's above. And then I really only have to worry about one spot because even if the wheel isn't there, this is thick enough that someone's either gonna be standing here or on the wheel right there. And plus that's not too far from each other. And one nice thing is if you do have someone covering you from back there, you can actually very comfortably get onto this side rock. And the reason I like this side rock is because then if you can jump up, you can get jump up again. You see this here? You can get on this and you can actually give yourself quite a bit of angle. You can get all the way out here and you can see a lot of space here. You can see back altar. You can see the top of the bridge. You can see down here, like I was already pointing out. And a lot of people who peek from this side to this side, they're not worrying about where you're sitting right now. They're worrying about getting shot out here or from right here. Because nine times out of 10, people on the inside are peeking like this or they're right here and they're peeking like that. So they can clear out this area and think that you're all the way back there behind that rock because of the radar. They're gonna see you on the radar. They're gonna assume you're behind this rock ready to peek on that side or that side or on that side of that rock. So I catch a lot of people off guard where I'll get just two quick hand cannon headshots from up there right here. And then I'll tell my team to go and push in. 
Now this is pretty similar. I like to hug the wall and I'll just quickly peek the area like this. Ultimately, I like it because I can sort of like one by one, step by step, get closer and closer. And then if I know I'm good here, I can actually obtain control too by throwing this across there. Now, the only thing I have to be worried about is you probably didn't notice it. If I'm here, you do have to be careful because that wheel, if that wheel is not there, someone can actually see you from all the way back here. Another little strategy that I wanted to share with you is that especially in trials, since most people do like to go through there, most opponents who start inside are pretty focused. When they're coming in like this, they're pretty focused on that doorway. And they don't often realize that you're gonna come through here. They might, they might think that you will, but what I like to do if I am gonna push through the middle, especially if I have a teammate or two teammates going through there, I really like to throw a lightning nade on that wall right there. And what that does is it almost always hits someone who's standing here, or if they're here and they're in a fight and they wanna run away, they'll run into my grenade. I cannot count the amount of times I've had a kill by throwing a grenade right there. I follow the same thought process on the west-hand side going in towards the middle. So I'll give you some homework for you to hop into a private match and take a look at those. But what if we wanna actually enter through west yard in towards west tumbler in A? I'm not gonna go through all those three scenarios because I know this is taking a while. I just want you to be aware of the sniping lanes. So number one, a lot of people like to sit up there. You can't just assume that someone's gonna be here. You have to clear this spot first. I typically don't like to come from this area. I'll come inside here and you could clear that from here as well. But I feel a lot better here because I can very closely scan this pillar area and I can feel pretty darn good about getting this close to this doorway and not having to worry about getting sniped from all of those different angles. I like to put in one of these. <sighs> Love that, by the way. You see how when I did that animation, I was actually able to watch this entire area and see if anyone was on top bridge down here, this side of the pillar, that side of the pillar. Of course, if anyone was up here. So after I've cleared out this area and cleared out up there, this is an extremely effective method. And if I don't see someone there, I go immediately. I need to make sure I slide in deep enough that I'm not getting shot by bridge. So if I don't slide in enough and I only slide to here, well, I can still get shot from bridge and from this area down here. So I always try and make sure I slide far enough that I effectively cancel out the bridge area who can shoot me from up there. Looking at some of the ones on the inside, I cannot believe how many times I see people get sniped across the bridge. Don't just strafe across here, okay? If you're gonna do it, you're gonna wanna slide and stay low. You wanna stay low so that the people across bridge can't snipe you. I'm almost always gonna go through here because I can just quickly cover back of altar here. And if I stay wide like this, I have a bit of risk. I have to worry about getting shot there or getting shot from somewhere over here. But if I push in a little bit tighter, you can see that I'm able to keep that angle closed off. I'm covering that and then I can slide out and check top bridge or bottom bridge and not be worried. I use this pillar to my advantage a lot. From the inside going out, a lot of options as well. Next up is a really popular one that I see in trials all the time. From the spawn point near A, people like to cross altar and go through C. They'll slide out and they'll be ready to snipe. This kind of tough if you slide out because again, you have this whole plane of where your enemy can be who can snipe you. So if you're going to do it, reduce the amount of area that you can get sniped at. If I'm starting to walk up here, what I like to do is again, play my angles. So I'll start to walk on the left hand side. If I'm confident there's no one in bridge, if I'm using this to my advantage, this whole corner here, I can strafe out on the left-hand side and now just focus my aim on the middle area in case there's someone pushing through there. Again, the radar plays a large role in which side I'm going to angle off. But once that's clear, then I'm ready to start doing this. Now again, similar to before, if I just go out on a wide angle, what am I doing? I'm opening myself up to risk on the left here as well as on the right here. And on the right here, it's not just right here, it's all the way back there too. And we know there's a spawn point there. So if you're on the attacking side, maybe you want to do that and go for a spawn snipe. But if you're not on the attacking side and you are concerned about getting shot there because they have control, maybe angle it off, hug this wall, get in closer here. Now you can pay attention to the middle. Things like that can go a really long way. You can check the area out here first. You can look above here. You don't have to slide out like that. You can just literally check the area by going tighter to this corner on this top step. You can check this whole area out like this. All right, we'll cover two more, then we're done with this section. So if you're coming out this way, let's say you decide to go bridge, 
and there could be someone there. If you're a good sniper, you're probably fine though, because it's not like you're opening yourself up to a large amount of area. So it's truly not that big of a deal. Or if you're not sniping, or if you're not on the attack, what I try and tell my teammates is, well, that's fine. Just slide across like this. Just turn your head away and keep going. It's not an easy snipe to hit when someone does that. So if you're coming through the middle like this, you always got to pay attention to that doorway. And then when you're on this side, this is the catch. Someone right there can see you and a lot of people don't realize that. But if you are here, the radar can be tricky sometimes. It can mislead you into thinking people are right on this side rather than right on this side. Like the difference between right here and right here isn't enough for your radar to always know. So if I'm here, I usually wait a moment to see if someone's gonna pop out on this side or I'll throw a grenade on that wall just to clear that out for me. And then I can start doing this. My personal favorite route in round one of trials, for example, if I'm on the inside, is to run to the middle via bottom bridge. Of course, you don't want to use the same routes all of the time, but this is one that I find works really well when you're opening up the match. And I do make it quick. If I'm going to do this and I don't see someone instantly, I'm immediately either checking right here or up here, or I'm letting go of my ADS and checking my radar. A lot of people hang on to their ADS way too long. So if I don't see someone right away off the get-go, I'm immediately assuming that someone's going to be coming in from the middle or they've gone all the way to the west yard and I'm vulnerable to this location. If I get shots off, I do need to try and use this pillar to try and block myself off from the outside or from that side there and continue to fight and then push through. Now I'm showing you a short clip where I've demonstrated one of Burnout's most common spawn traps. And if you found this video helpful, then the link on the top left will bring you to the video for the footage showing now. Or if you'd like to switch it up, then the video on the top right is YouTube's recommendation based on your watch history. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments or drop a like so I can get some feedback on these topics. Enjoy the rest of your day.